my son attends a redeemed church okay. and the pastor of the redeemed church he goes to is it's like a guardian to him. His pocket money I give to the I, I send to the pastor and he gives to him after service. Okay. Every Friday. So I spoke with him on that Friday afternoon, which was February 14. And he said that they had just finished from church, you know, and that he was going back. You know, we just generally chatted and you know find out how he was. And then on, at about 3.05 a.m. on Saturday, which was February 15th, I just got up to go and use the bathroom. Just as I was lying back in bed, this, my two phones, I keep them by my, the drawer of my bedside. The phone rang and I picked it up. My and I looked at it, it was a divine number. I made a lot of promotion at the time. And I was just wondering, I'll tell you about, your, about friends, who are your friend there, your son. And the phone went dead. Ha! Huh? What has happened? I started to look back at the number, but she was answering. I wasn't picking up. You know, I was not fancy. I called my son's number, I was switched on. Who can I keep on her? This man is not answering his phone. And I remember during the period of Christmas, we had gone there to spend Christmas. As my son told me about a friend that he was very close to, a South African boy. I spoke with the boy, you know, so many times during that period on the phone. He was supposed to come for Christmas lunch. His parents are in Dubai, you know, both parents are in Dubai. But he, he couldn't make it, so my son took the jollof fries. I said, this is a Nigerian delicacy. He was going to give it to him, make a packed it, and he took to him. Mm -hmm. So I then said, let me call Nick. Nick would know what had happened. So I called him, his name is Nick. I called his number and he answered. And I said, Nick, where is Tyler? And he said to me, I'm sorry, Tyler passed. Excuse me, what do you mean he passed? He said, I'm sorry, man, he passed. I said, wow, what happened? He said he fell on the balcony. And I said, where is he now? You know, I needed to be focused now. Mm. He said, where is he now? He said, I'm here with him. I said, where is he here with him? He said, in his apartment, waiting for the ambulance to come. I said, who is there, who is there with you? He said, he's there. He said, I'm here with him by myself. I said, when the ambulance comes, please tell them not to move him. He should give me 30 minutes. My son cannot die. Mm. Because I'm going to call pastors and they should start praying for my son. Mm. And I also said to him, Start praying for your friend as well. I said, that's what I'm doing, man. Mm. Between the time I was calling my son's phone, he wasn't answering, I was calling Nick's phone, he now answered. Mm. You know, and then I had the two phones. At the point, my son's phone was now ringing. Mm. And I now told Nick, I said, but I just called his number. And it's ringing. He said, yes, it's me, man. I, the battery had run out. I needed to charge it so I can get numbers to call. I said, OK. I started calling. And I started calling him back. Uh, the, uh, the police arrived and they taken him that we now went to get my son's body. For about three days, the family, they wouldn't let us see his body. The family? Yeah. For whatever reason. I think it was about the third day that they would now let us see the body to identify it. Mm. So, when they went out bringing his body home, there was what they call a preliminary police report that they gave to the family. And the police report said that uh, my son had fallen, the cause of death, as he put it, was that he fell from a great height and the impact of the fall. And they went further to say that he was alone on the balcony when this happened that his girlfriend, they referred to this girl as his girlfriend, okay. was on the balcony with him, and that my son sat on the railing of that balcony and was swinging back and forth. Okay. And that the girl had told him to come down, that it was dangerous and that he could fall, but my son didn't listen. Okay. So the girl went back inside. Okay. By the time she came back to the balcony, that my son was no longer there, he had fallen. Okay. 
and that everybody in the apartment at that time, mm -hmm. five of them, my son inclusive will be six, okay, had given the same account as to what they told me in this report of him being alone, of swinging back and forth on the balcony, and then falling by himself. Mm -hmm. And that because everyone else gave the same accounts, they didn't think there was any foul play. Therefore, there was no need to investigate for it. That immediately raised the red flag in my head. Mm -hmm. I said, no, no, no. And they also said they had been out drinking and that there was a uh, high volume of alcohol in the system you know, at the time this happened. That's immediately the very red flag. I know this apartment so well. There's no way anybody can sit on that building that I just showed to you and be swinging back and forth. It's not possible. And that he was alone is also very doubtful. Mm. But I couldn't do anything because of the state I was in. You know, I've mm. just lost a son. Mm. I'm dealing with the grief. Mm. I want uh, him to be buried. Mm. And here I'm being told this had happened. But before the people, the family members who went to the bite to retrieve his body came back, I told them they should demand for the full investigative file that we are entitled to it by law. And they said, the police said that they couldn't give it to us. We have to apply through our embassy. Mm. And we applied through the embassy before we left. Till now, we still don't have the mm. reports other than what they gave to us initially. And of course, after the burial, I also needed now, because mm. I was so emotionally down to go abroad for three months. Mm. Mm. Whilst I was there, I contacted some lawyers in England. I told them what had happened and that I suspect foul play mm. and that he was murdered and I want to prosecute. Mm. And they told me that Dubai is a, is a state, is a state, is a police state, and that private prosecution is not possible. It's only state prosecution, mm. public prosecution in court. Mm. And I said that was a problem because the people I have a problem, this issue with is a is a is a public, is the state, is mm -hmm. the police. Yeah. But I didn't think they did a thorough investigation before reaching this conclusion. Mm -hmm. So when I came back home, I told Festus what had happened, the effort had made. He said he would contact some of his friends in Dubai, some lawyers. And they also told him the same thing, that there is no private prosecution in Dubai, it's only in public. Mm -hmm. And public means that it is only the Nigerian government that can also demand mm. Mm, for these things that I demanded for as an MP. Mm. And I, I thought that, you know, for me to compel the Nigerian government to do anything, I would need to go to Dubai and find out how my son died. Mm. So I took festivals with me over the Easter period, okay, and we went to Dubai with another friend. Mm. The people who were in the apartment, Faisal, who is from Saudi Arabia, Olivia, who is the British girl, the Nick boy, who is who I'm talking to now, who is South African, there's a Joaquin, who is French Canadian, and there's a Ditch, who is before, who is a Nigerian. These are the five people who were in the apartment. And that sometime in December, there had been an altercation between this Faisal boy and my son over this Olivia girl. Mm. That Olivia had accused my son of, or accused his girlfriend of dating, of cheating on him mm. with my son. Mm. And that there was almost, you know, they were almost going physical, but they managed to settle it without any, mm. any further issues. But on this particular day mm. of the 15th, mm. they had been to a club, mm. and that Faisal, and Olivia were in some kind of heated argument in the club, and that Joachim at, all, at some point was also now involved. Joachim and DJ went in the car to my son's apartment, back to my son's apartment, and that they were surprised and shocked when they got to the apartment on the 17th floor. They found Faisal and 
this British girl mm. who was in some kind of distress and was crying sitting by the door to my son's apartment. And that they thought that, okay, maybe they have come to make whatever it is, make some peace here. So my son opened the door and they all went in. And that my son, Elza and Olivia went into the bedroom where my son tried to settle whatever quarrel there was amongst them. And after some time, they left the bedroom and went to the balcony. And after a while, Olivia and Faisal came back into the sitting room and announced to them that my son had fallen from the balcony. And at meanwhile, they noticed a splatter of blood on the t-shirt that Faisal was wearing. He had cuts on his fingers. His knuckles had blood. And he told them that, this is what he does, guys don't worry, I got this all covered, I will do 25 years maximum. You don't have to worry about anything, I will go for 25 years maximum. And they were like, 25 years. They rushed to the balcony, and of course they couldn't find my son there. So they went to the lift, everybody rushed down. And there my son was. The security had called the police, they were waiting for police, why police were they were waiting, Fiza kept on about this 25 years, and at a point they now asked him about this blood on his t-shirt, how come you have, you have blood on it? And he said it was while he was trying to pull my son up when he was falling, and that's how he got blood. When the police eventually arrived, they took this Fiza apart, and they were speaking in Arabic. He would speak to them in Arabic frantically, he would come back to them and say, tell them, you guys don't worry, 25 years maximum I will go for until they now took everybody to the station. Because the police report that police sent to us said that my son was a girl on the balcony. And that you guys, everybody that was in the apartment said the same thing. That was why they said that, uh, they concluded that he was there all by himself. And it's that there was a big, a big gap at the back of my son's head. He didn't think that if it if that gap was as a result of a fall, it would be a crack. Mm. But he just wanted us that he, he found that all and that is the splatter of blood on the t-shirts, the cuts on his fingers, the, you know, the blood on the knuckles, and the 25 years that he said he was spent in jail, that they shouldn't worry, he doesn't, that he would take this ready for this, he would take the rap, they should not worry 25 years max. You know, the police taking him aside, speaking to him, Arabic mm. and all that. Where they found my son's body was too far away from the building for somebody that fell from that height. You mm. will be better mm. But that the body was like 18 to 20 meters away from the building. When Festus and my friend came back from the apartment, mm. they also made that observation that they spoke with the security and they asked the security, they want to see where that body was when the police came to take it. And the, the, uh, the security took them there. And they think that this is, this is very, very strange. This, this is too far away from the building for somebody that uh, must have been a, a throw. Maybe they threw him, not even a push. Maybe they uh, swung him. So they took pictures. Where they found my son's body, you see those the small uh, demarcation is where the, uh, is the is the compound of the building. It was after that demarcation that my son's body was about nine yards after that demarcation that they found my son's body on the sidewalk. I knew that the police reports could not have been what they said it was, mm. and this just confirmed to me that my son was. That he was on the balcony with these two, Faisal and Olivia. So they would tell me what happened to my son. Faisal didn't explain the blood on his shirt, explain the cut on his fingers. Mm -hmm. When they were going to the station, Olivia was called her parents and they gave her a lawyer who was present at where she was being interrogated. 
and that the, the shirt was not taken from the boy. He was allowed to walk away <laughs> with that shirt on his body. They are not sure if his blood sample was taken. Another Nigerian boy who, who was also my, my son's friend, although he was not present, said when he heard, he ran to the police station, mm -hmm. the Jedelali police station, and also said he saw the blood in his station's shirt. And he asked him, and he said, he put, first he said he didn't know how the blood, the blood got to his body. And he said, I can't even But well, the fact remains that my son was murdered. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. That the police is trying to cover up. Right. By telling me that the same account of witnesses, I never got them out of all the system. Mm -hmm. And we discovered that uh, his dad, although he's Saudi Arabian, has a lot of heavy investment in Dubai. The family is into all kinds of businesses. So, they will be trying to cover up for Fiza. Fiza, when they got downstairs, he was now crying. This is the second, uh, is the second friend that will die. This is the second friend that will die. And I said, they didn't they did tell you how the first one died. Yes. They said, no, they didn't ask him. So at the point I am now, that mm -hmm. as a grieving mother, as one who has lost a son, mm -hmm. as one who is emotionally distressed, I've been made also to start investigating my own son's death yes. in a country where we have an embassy, in a country where we came to have a government. I'm saying this is not even about my son anymore. My son is dead. He's gone. I can't bring him back. Like the ambassador told me, the week my son died, my son was just another number. My son was number five. Four Nigerians have died in, in similar circumstances, he said, as he put it. Three of them students, including my son. The two of them, the two others, without, who are not students. I said to him, I said in this country, he doesn't know why people send their children here. It's not safe for students, it's not safe for some. Who did you tell? Who did you mm -hmm. Information is power. If we had this information, mm -hmm. if we had the information and we still decide to send our children, then we would take responsibility for whatever happened. But where that information has not been shared, that is what the embassy is for in any country. People have died before my son because information was not shared. People will die again after my son if we don't share this information, that there's a dark side to Dubai, that the glamour, the glaze, all this is awful. It is the perception of what they want the world to see about them because of their tourism. I said, so you haven't done me any good by telling, sharing this information. So this is the message I want the government to also begin to learn how to play this premium on the lives of my children, wherever they are, either at home or abroad. We have children all over the place. If our education, if our education was so, we don't need to be sending our children abroad and then to be bringing their corpses back. Mm. Any mother should not be made to go through that. I have search my mind. This is, this is me destroyed for life. The only thing that is pushing me now is just to get this information out and to get justice for myself. And at this point, I can't do it by myself. It has to be, like they said, it's this public prosecution means it's state against state. I have done my bits. I have done everything I could do, which is if, if I should not even make, be made to go through this. No. Get it clean to Dubai. I, should, I don't want to go to Dubai again for the rest of my life. But I needed to do this for myself. I needed to do this for Nigerian youth. I needed to do this for every parent who has a child or who has children in Dubai. That if you can't bring them back, start telling them to be very careful. Uh, Faiza, the person suspected to have committed this, is a, I mean, for emphasis, a citizen of which country? He's a Saudi, he's a Saudi boy. But they live in Dubai, according to the information on that. It's on Facebook. If you Google their name on Facebook, you'll see okay. you know, their investment in Dubai. Olivia is uh, 
maybe what we call the bone of contention here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, the police reports that uh, you, I mean, however, however, very brief or, and not too detailed that you got from police there. Is it written or is it just verbal? It's written. It's written. It's a written police report. And it doesn't contain the testimony of other witnesses. It doesn't contain. It just it, it didn't contain any testimony. Tell just says, mm. this is it's a generalized happened? thing. Mm. All these five people mm. they said the same it's thing. Okay. Therefore, we didn't think there was any uh, any need for further investigation since all witnesses accounts that's were the same. same. Mm. Therefore, cause of death will be as a result of a fall oh, from a great height. And as a, also a result of alcohol, alcohol. in the system. Mm. Mm. As brief as that, yeah. the police, the point of contention is that the police said this boy was a law. The police did not mention that <laughs> Faisal yeah, and Olivia were with, mm. were with him mm. on the balcony. Mm. The police mm. didn't say anything about blood mm. on Faisal's t shirt, about cuts on his fingers, it's about it's blood on his knuckles. Yeah. They didn't mention anything of that sort. In the, accounts, was, in the account Nick gave you, mm -hmm. he said he suspected that the court he found on the neck. Yeah, he said, no, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, on the back of his head. The back of his head. Yeah, that, um, and it was, it was, it was deep. Yeah. Yeah. We buried him in Nigeria, yeah. in uh, Victoria, I mean, at the uh, Koyi Vos and uh, on the 3rd of March. This thing happened on the 15th. I think on the 15th, uh, Olivia posted on her Facebook. Mm -hmm. R.I.P. Tyler. I'm sorry, I was not able to help. And then Faisal went on his own Facebook, hmm. posted a picture that my son took with Olivia, and also said, R.I.P. Tyler. This was the last picture. Does hmm. Faisal still live in that apartment? They don't live in the same apartments. Okay, what were they doing there together? I mean, after club? That is the thing, that is the question. This is a, an apartment that has security. Mm -hmm. For you to go to the lift, you will pass security. Supposedly, there are CCTV cameras everywhere in Dubai. We know that shops have CCTV, mm -hmm. which is why they can open, you know, buildings everywhere has CCTV. Mm -hmm. But now this building is telling me that their own CCTV does not work on the floors. It only captures entrance, going and coming. And I said, okay, can I see the no, picture of when they went out mm -hmm. and when they, they came, came back? back. Mm -hmm. At least that will tell us the state they were in when they mm -hmm. went out mm -hmm. and the state they were in when, when they, they came, came back. back. And now you are telling me you are not sure it captured. Mm -hmm. And another thing that first us and my friend discovered, for every building in Dubai, especially in Dubai Marina, it's one of the highbrow areas in Dubai, one of the most expensive. For you to enter a building, if you are not a resident, there's a law that you sign, which is why the entrance, the security is by the entrance, going and coming. Why did they let Olivia and Faisal go up when they are not residents in that building? Could their friends have uh, brought them in? No, even if, even if you are, if you, even uh, if you are my friend, have to sign for you, have, you should sign. Mm -hmm. And they also now discover that that the, the incident book of that day, mm -hmm. there's been an attempt to alter in uh, TPEX here and, and then uh, isolation mm -hmm. and you know, things like that. And that one of the security men who was on duty that night has been transferred from that building. Immediately after the incident. Mm -hmm. yeah, Apparently, Faisal was the only person trying to rescue. Him. So, if anybody really knew what happened on the back of the what yeah. happened on the back of that, would be Faisal and Olivia. Mm -hmm. Olivia. Mm -hmm. And that Olivia's Facebook message mm -hmm. is pregnant with me. Mm -hmm.